Welcome back to PSC's Tech Bytes. Today we keep on talking about how you can use React and MSAEL to consume an external API. And today I want to explain you how you can consume a custom API of your own, which is, for example, implemented using TypeScript, Node.js and Express. And specifically, I want to show you how you can validate the access token signature that you will get on the API side and how you can manage the permission scopes and validate the, the access token that you get at the API level is the one you are looking for in order to authorize access to your target API. So, like always, let me move to the demo environment and let me show you how to do that in practice. So let's say that we want to restart from the application that we have created in the previous episode, the 291. In this one, we use this uh, uh, button to make a query to the Microsoft Graph to retrieve the display name of the currently connected user. Now I want to do more. In the uh, portal azure.com under Azure Enter ID, for my consumer application, I configured that I want to have the permission to consume a REST API that is still registered in Azure Enter ID. So let's have a look at this application registration first. This is a regular application registered in Entra ID. And from an API permission, there is nothing really special here. But in the Expose an API section, we are exposing a couple of uh, permission scopes. The REST API.consumer.read and the REST API.consumer.readWrite, which are some hypothetical permission, permission scopes that I want to provide with my uh, custom API, which will have this unique URI. Then, if I go to the consumer demo, we can see that in the API permission, I added the permission for that specific API and for one of the two permission scopes defined there. So now my consumer application, from an entry ID point of view, is granted the permission to consume a backend REST API. But I'm now going to build uh, together with you. So first of all, I need to uh, go into a folder which will be the container of my application and I need to init uh, npm for the uh, uh, solution so that I will start to use Node.js. Then I can install a bunch of packages including Express, MSAL for Node.js, uh, types uh, to manage uh, Express and the uh, JSON web token together with the package to manage the web token and stuff like that. So, let me install all of these packages. It will take a while, so I will fade out and fade in. And when it's ready, we can start playing with the uh, REST API uh, application. Now it is ready, all the packages have been installed. So now we can simply init uh, TypeScript, which was installed in the previous step, and we can start uh, using uh, uh, Visual Studio Code uh, and we can create a subfolder which will be the SRC subfolder where I'm going to uh, locate uh, all of the source file for my solution. So let me open in Visual Studio Code uh, this new application that I've just created uh, and let's start writing in the source folder, SRC folder, a bunch of files. First of all I want to create a new file where I will store the configuration for MSAL. So in this file I'm going to create uh, a uh, constant uh, uh, type uh, which will define all of the settings uh, for MSAL. As you can see right here, I will have to define the client ID, the authority for my API, as well as the configuration that I want to use to validate the tokens that I will receive with my application. And in the your client ID, I will have to use uh, the client ID of my API application. So let me go to the API and let me copy this value from here and let me paste it in the application. We can do oops, uh, we can do the same right here when we want to define the audience. And then we need to also copy the tenant ID, which we are going to use in the issuer for any token that we will receive. This will be a single tenant application, as well as here as the authority for my application. Now that I have the configuration for MSAL in Node.js, I need to configure uh, a bunch of middleware uh, classes that I'm going to use to do the validation of the token and the validation of the permission scopes. So first of all, I'm going to create a new file which I'm going to call outmiddleware.ts and in this file we are going to import some of the packages that we installed before. We define a set of uh, uh, settings for a, a JWKS uh, client which we are going to use uh, to retrieve the information to validate the signature of the uh, token 
uh, that we get as the access token as an input and then we start defining a few methods uh, for example a method to retrieve uh, the keys that we want to use uh, to validate the signature and then we uh, make available a middleware uh, function that we will use uh, in express uh, to do the actual validation of the request so here we can simply say that we have our validate access token function which will receive as an input the request the response and the next function in the pipeline we get the authorization header from the request if any and if we don't have an authorization header of course the request is unauthorized but if we have it and if it is a better one we can then split it we can get the content of the better token and we can do the validation using the jwt or jot uh, uh, class uh, that we can uh, define and import uh, right here in this uh, section and of course we need to provide a bunch of information including the token the key that we want to use to validate it the issuer and the audience that we want to use to validate and once we are done with the validation, if the token is okay, all good, and if not, again, unauthorized. And this will be our middleware to validate uh, the uh, signature on the access token. Now, we also need to add another middleware to validate the permission scopes. Here, we simply rely on the uh, request, response, and next function. And in the function, we simply check for the permission scopes that we are looking for in the request. So we have a validate scope function, middleware function, which will require a list, uh, an array of required scopes that we want to have in order to be able to invoke the target API. We look for the user in the request and if the user does have any permission scope, we try to see if the permission scopes are matching those required. And if not, again, we provide a forbidden response because we have got an access token which is valid from a signature point of view, but it doesn't have the permission scopes that we are looking for. Now that we are done with this part of the story, we can start writing the real API. So we can create an index.ts file in our solution. And in this file, we are going to import Express to being able to provide the API, as well as the middleware logic to validate the access token and to validate the permission scopes. We also want to make it possible to use this API while configured from a course point of view. So I will first of all define a bunch of settings about course and I will initialize the application uh, using Express and I define the uh, port that my application will listen to. Then I define in the uh, Express application the settings for course and for using a JSON request. And once I'm done with that, I can define an API in my application which will be an API under the slash API slash protected endpoint, which from a middleware point of view will first of all validate the signature of the token and then validate the scope, saying that we want to have a request which will include this permission scope in the access token. And then we simply process the request and we say, okay, hello, you are here. You have been authorized to consume this protected resource. And of course, if I don't have the authorization, it will fail and I will get an exception. Plus the fact that we uh, want to listen for any request uh, on uh, the port that we define right here and we say, hey, we are listening for any request. So that's the implementation of the API. Now, if we want to run this API, we can easily update the package.json file and in the script section, we can add an item to start our uh, Node.js application. So now let me go to the terminal. And let me say npm start and my uh, node.js uh, uh, rest api running on express should be uh, available and ready to provide uh, uh, a response to a consumer and here we are the api is running now what we really need to do is to actually consume this api from our consumer so let me go back to the consumer application and let me improve it a little bit First of all, in the outconfig file, we need to declare that we want to be able to consume that specific API and we want to get an access token with a specific permission scope for that API. So we declare a new API token request, not only the login request that we used in the previous episode to do the authentication and get the user.read permission scope in an access token, but we also want to get an access token for this specific unique URI with the specific permission scope. Once we have done that, 
we need to implement a new component that we are going to use uh, to consume the REST API and that we are going to invoke uh, from our application. First of all, in this component, uh, we will rely on a bunch of uh, uh, packages and components that we have, uh, including MSAL, including React and stuff like that. And of course, we are going to read the API token request uh, that we defined uh, right now in the out-config file. Then we can define a function to get an access token for our target API. And we can do that by defining this function, which will simply get as an input the public client application of MSAL for Node.js. And by trying to use the default uh, and primary account of the current user, we get an acquire token silent for a specific request, which will include the API token request and the account of the user. If we get the token, we do that because we want to use it uh, uh, to consume our target API. So I'm going to define a function, which will be the actual one invoking the API. It will be the invoke REST API. I still get as an input the public client application of MSAL and the endpoint of the API. I get the access token with the previous function that we have just seen. And once I've got it, I create an authorization error of type bearer with the token value inside of it. And we make a get request, a fetch or a GET request with that specific header in order to get the response as JSON and we show the response as the result of this function. Now we simply need to create a functional component that we are going to use to uh, provide the actual implementation of the uh, REST API component in our application. This is a functional component of React. We first of all define an API result string or null that we use in the state of our component, of our functional component. And then we have an invoke API click function that we bind to the onClick event of a button, which will be uh, called invoke REST API. And when we do that, we invoke the REST API using the function that we saw before, and we provide the URL of the target protected API that we want to push. In case of a good result, we show it in the API result, so we set it in the state so that we show it right here. In case of an exception, we show error instead of the actual return value of the uh, API that we are going to consume. So now we simply need to export this component and to use it inside uh, the React application. So let me go here in the app TSX, and here we can simply import the React component and start using it. So we can say that we want to import it and we can say that we want to use it in the UI of our React application. So let me save it one more time. Let me save the out config file so that we should be good to go. And now we can go back to the web application, the single page application in React. Now we have still the user authenticated right here and we can invoke the REST API. So just for the sake of showing you what's going on, let me press F12. And we can see that we get a proper response from the target REST API. If we look at the network tracing, we can see that we provided an access token in the request and I can use jot.ms to show you what's inside of the token. And in fact, this token is for our custom API, for this issuer, which is the tenant where I am, this is my user, and this is the list of permission scopes where I have the REST API.consumer.readWrite, which is precisely the permission scope that I'm looking for right here. Now, let's say that I want to change my mind and I want to have the dot .list permission, which doesn't exist actually, but just for the sake of showing you that now the request will fail. So let me go back right here. I can invoke the REST API again and now I get an error because when I make this request, I'm providing an access token with a permission scope, which is not the one the API is looking for. And as such, I get a forbidden response from the REST API. So you can easily consume securely a target REST API from a React application using Node.js and Express as the uh, framework to host your target REST API. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you found it interesting and I'm really looking forward to seeing you next week. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.